Well, it's hot. Things are happening. The humidity's here. We are officially in summer. Things are happening to our lawn that we don't necessarily want to have happen. They might be turning brown. We start seeing some spots. What do we do? Well, stick around because we're going to go over my three biggest tips that we can go over in the summertime in a cool season lawn to help you battle the heat, avoid stress, and enjoy your lawn this summer. So we just came out of a three, four day period where it was 90s, upper 90s. We even made it in two days where it was triple digits. And that was one heck of a heat stress uh, or a, a stress test that was put onto our lawn. And it came out of it, it bent, definitely didn't break. But we're gonna talk about three things that you need to do to come out of heat stress going into it and really playing defense for the rest of the summer so you can actually enjoy your yard like you planned on this year. So the very first thing that I did about three, four weeks ago was actually raise my mower blades up. And if you haven't done that already, you should definitely try and start to do that because you need to give that grass blade some extra length in order to battle off some of the heat stress that it's about to endure for the rest of summer. A general rule of thumb on cool season turf, if you have a Kentucky bluegrass, tall fescue, perennial ryegrass, is come up a good half inch to an inch from your previous height of cut. And what that does is actually elongate that grass blade to play more defense on itself to battle off things like funguses, disease, and give it the proper nutrients and cell nutrients to battle off heat stress that we're about to endure, have been enduring, for the rest of the summer. And while we are talking mower blades and raising the height of cut, we wanna make sure to actually keep our blades sharp. We want that sharp angle on the grass blade to, again, avoid any disease getting in there and any stress tolerance that doesn't need to be there that we weren't already planning on. So sharpen your blades. If they look like the one on the left-hand side, we need to start thinking about sharpening your blades. You can pick up a cheap drill attachment. You can get them professionally done. You can do a flap disc. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do that, which I've got linked down below. The second thing that we need to do is figure out if our lawn is just going dormant or we have bigger issues. Most of the time in a cool season lawn, we are just gonna be going into a dormant phase. The lawn is going to play defense when it does get above 80, 85, 90 degrees, and it's gonna go to sleep. We need to tell the grass that it is okay and it's safe to wake up here and we just need to actually just wake it up with here's the secret sauce some water so how do we tell if our lawn is dormant or we have a bigger issue on our hands like fungus or disease well take a look at your lawn take a couple pictures of it just get a good idea of what it looks like and go look at a public place a park or a median or side of the road where we've got uh, kind of publicly maintained areas. I'm a big fan of doing that because you can compare it to a lesser maintained space than most likely yours is to get that general idea as if it looks the same or not. So how much water do we need to have our lawn come out of dormancy? And the answer to that is it really depends on your situation, your grass type, and what you are going through environmentally. And if you've got a humid situation, you probably want to hold off just a little bit just because we don't want to incorporate any unwanted fungus in there or any unwanted wanted disease that would otherwise still be there. So when the temperatures do come down and that environment is safe to water again, you're probably looking at a good inch to an inch and a half to tell the grass that it needs to come out. And you want to spread that out probably over a two, three day period to stimulate a rainy, cool season spring or fall and growth season telling the grass that it's okay. And I went ahead and watered one inch overnight in a spot that is continuously dormant based upon the way the sun hits it, the way the wind hits it off of the hill coming out from the west. And this was the before and after, after one inch overnight after the environments were right to do so. And while we're here, this is a good time to remind you to go deep and infrequent on your watering schedules. Do not go in and water every single day. Shame on you if you are doing so. That is my personal opinion. And the only reason that I have that opinion is because I wanna to try to drive our root development underground as deep as humanly possible to fight off all of the stress that we're just going through and what we're going to have in the rest of the summer. Deep and infrequent watering schedules will have that root chasing moisture, driving underground as much as possible, seeking water when it needs it, versus just expecting it every single day and kind of hanging out at the surface. So if you haven't already changed your watering schedule to deepen and frequent if it fits your grass type and your environment, do so, you will thank me later. And the next thing we need to talk about is actually fertilizing and the schedule in which you should fertilize in the summer. And contrary to popular belief, you actually can fertilize your lawn in the middle of the summer. You just have to do it with the right amounts and the right 
products that actually work for what you're trying to do. Based upon my soil needs and everything that I've got going on in my lawn, I have a granular program spread out about four to six weeks apart and I spoon feed with soil amendments with different liquid f fertilizers to hit my micronutrients and things like that in the middle to actually help boost the overall color and growth of my lawn in the middle of that big granular slow release program. If you don't have a program, that is okay. Don't go overboard on applying something like nitrogen. Obviously, if you apply too much nitrogen in one particular spot, you'll obviously burn your lawn. You got to be careful with this. You got to make sure it's watered in. I wouldn't go above 0.5 pounds of nitrogen. Grass needs nitrogen. It will accept it. We just want to make sure that we don't apply too much of it so you can't keep up on the growth cycle and driving that growth upwards when we kind of want it to go underneath the ground. So with that, we want to make sure that we can have some potassium in there as well obviously based upon your soil needs but potassium is that defense player that will help build that cell wall defense to fight off diseases to fight off fungus to fight off all of the heat stress so that being said i typically look for fertilizers that have a two to one ratio on potassium to nitrogen respectfully so double the amount or percentage of potassium that you would have for nitrogen that fits my personal needs it doesn't necessarily fit yours you'll only know that by getting a soil test lastly we're going to want to talk weeds and weed control in the summer what to do what really not to do and go from there you can fight weeds it is okay to fight weeds again similar to fertilizer you just have to do it smart and you have to prepare for what's ahead in terms of gathering your product for the growth period in the fall you'll hear me preach big time on pre-emergence in the springtime you'll hear me preach about that in the late summer so we can hit that for the fall application. But the big weed that's gonna be popping through in most cool season lawns in the summertime and then this heat is crabgrass. And we're gonna to wanna to actually treat that, or you can treat that, you can let it go and tackle it in the fall. But if you want to, there's just a couple things to consider here. Crabgrass can be tackled by a whole bunch of different varieties, either granular or liquid. If you do want to go the liquid route, just be very careful on the product that you go with. It is okay to tackle this. The active ingredient that you're going to want to go for is quinclorac, and you want to make sure that it is actually going to do the work that you want to. So I've got a product or a couple products listed down below that will help you and get pointed in the right direction. The one caveat to these products is making sure to apply it under 90 or 85 degrees Fahrenheit. That's typically the threshold that I stay under is that 85 degrees just to be safe you're going to do more damage than good with that liquid product and the concentrate of what's actually in there you're going to do more harm to your grass and the surrounding that product on the selective nature than actually killing the weed that you want to target itself so just be careful read the label cannot stress that enough so in review you've got heat you've got humidity you want a less stressful time period we need to fix our mowing structure and fix our mowing height of cut to give it the best chance to actually survive this stress by raising our deck we want to hone in on our watering schedule hone in on our fertilizer schedule and give it the nutrients that it actually needs and we want to tackle weed control as kind of a fourth bonus option but just don't be stupid about it when it's super hot if you found this video helpful do subscribe to my channel give it a like, comment any questions down below so you can always stay in the loop of what's coming down the pipeline from my channel to yours. I'm Ope, and we will see you next time. Take care.